here's my personal review. I absolutely adore this game. I loved it. And I was constantly surprised that it kept getting better and better and better. Every single time I finished a stream session for this game, I was kind of blown away. And I missed a ton of stuff, right? I missed so much throughout my playthrough. And I was trying to go out of my way to look for things too. And there's just a ton of secrets for replayability. It's got a ton of replayability with choices, right? Let's talk about the basic stuff, which is like story. It's a bit easier to follow than traditional FromSoft, but there's still a lot of like mystery all over the place. It's all, it's all over the place. There's still a healthy amount of just like, what is going on? How is this happening? The way it exposes it to you. There's just so much to it. And a lot of really great character development and stuff. For people that like are a little turned off by like the Elden Ring and FromSoft style storytelling, I feel like it's a pretty good in-between. And also it's like, it's a Pinocchio, you know? It, it's it's something that you all know about. And all, all it really does is just give me like crazy hope of what, where they can go and what they could do. And I don't want to like obviously spoil anything right here, but there's just so much, so many different directions that they could go with this shit. So gameplay stuff, dude, weapons, like the, the game is nuts. There's a billion things you can do with replayability on the weapons. Like it's wild. So you get like, obviously the boss weapons have their own practical unique move sets. Maybe not entirely, but the majority of them are pretty crazy unique. And then you have the handles for the weapons that are actually different movesets. And then the modifiers for the handles, which are like the heads of the weapons that change kind of like the abilities they have. So there's just a ton of things. Like the variety is crazy. I tried to get a bunch. I'm missing a lot. I really am. There's no ranged weapons, but there is a ton of throwable items. And I later found out that, yeah, the, the throwable items are kind of nuts. Believe it or not, they, this game gives you a lot of resources to kill the enemy. Almost too much to a certain degree. Well, that's cool. There's just so many things you can do between the fable arts. I probably didn't even see all of them, you know? And it's not even including the, the puppet arms, which I stuck with puppet string because the, the final attack for it is crazy, but you can do an entire playthrough with like the shield one or any of these other things and just drastically changes stuff, like dramatically changes what you do. You don't realize it, but they give you so many of these things, right? They give you so much of this stuff throughout the playthrough, where if you, you want to reload these things, that you just get a ton of it. Like, it's so much fun. And then you start realizing, oh, this is how much freedom I have. It's so sick, too. Like, there, there's so many options to beat ass in this game. And I had a couple of moments where it was like, oh, I'm utilizing the mechanics and I am whooping butt now dude this is crazy cool and i started utilizing that all the way to the final fights speaking of the fights so this game is like you know the majority of the majority of it is bosses how epic and how crazy are the bosses and i can only think of one boss that i that i thought was mostly gimmicky and not that great and it's the door guardian the door guardian is kind of like a mini boss too even that is like kind of a minor boss door guardian just kind of sucks but everything else Every other fight, I'm like, okay, this is kind of frustrating and lame, but then you learn something and you're like, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I can... Every single fight was like that. I was kind of blown away. And some of them were sort of like simple. Hour long later, like some hour and 15 minute boss, it just felt perfect where you just nail this shit and just destroy it. I was like, oh my God. I think I just adored every single boss fight to the point where I don't think any of the others from soft like games, the Souls likes that I've played, get boss fights as right as this. I think even, I, I think this game has better boss fights than Dark Souls 1, if not Demon Souls. I think it does a better job than even some of the early FromSoft games. There's definitely a better job than Dark Souls 2. That's the crazy part is that I, I think Lies of P is directly comparable to FromSoft games. And I think that's probably the biggest review I can, the most glowing review I can give it, which is what I said several times over. This is not a Souls-like, it's a Souls game. 
It just is. So much of it is just so directly like one-to-one -one with their design philosophy that all these other developers have tried for the past 10 years to get this right. And a lot of games have come very close and taken these elements. This just feels like FromSoft made a Pinocchio game. They get it. They just didn't take the things that they did. Like, we're gonna try, right? We're just gonna make it our game really obtuse and really, you know, not direct storytelling. We're gonna make our combat really weighty and heavy. Like all the things that you think make FromSoft games FromSoft games, right? No, 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 like they they kind of get it. And even the, lo the level design to a degree is super good. I think the only thing that was sort of lacking in some places was maybe like the voice acting, but just talking about like combat and what you can do it. Yeah, it has that FromSoft feeling where it's like, I could, I could see myself going through this game several different ways and just having it be the way it is and playing it a completely different way. I love this game, dude. I love it. And it's spooky and it's creepy and it's all Atmo and the art is amazing. And here's the thing. Some people are like, I like this more than Bloodborne. I think this game is better than Bloodborne. You know what? I think that's fair. I think some, some people having that interpretation of this, it might be better to some people. I get it. I'll, although I, I don't say that's true for me. Because th there's probably, of all the Souls games, that isn't just Bloodborne littered throughout this game. It is not. It's got a lot of Sekiro in it, and it's got a lot of, like, Dark Souls 3-ish. To be honest, the combat really isn't Bloodborne-like. The way it feels doesn't feel like Bloodborne. It just feels more like Souls. It feels like it feels like Dark Souls 3. In the same way that I would say, a lot of people ask me, do you like FF7 Remake more than the original? And I go, well, no. Because the original is the original. The original inspired, like, FF7 Remake to be what it is, without... Without the original, this game wouldn't be a thing. I wouldn't like this as much. It's the exact same way about Bloodborne. This game wouldn't exist without Bloodborne. None of the other Souls games like integrate all of this storytelling into mechanics, into, you know, items, like all this stuff as much as Bloodborne does. Bloodborne does it just beautifully, where it's just wild. This, oh my God, this is so thought through. This is so cool. This game's kind of like that, right? Where it, it does that same thing in that way, even better than the majority of other FromSoft games. So the fact that these developers understood that is just what gets me the most about this. The whole lying thing and developing your character. It's like I said, it's missing a character creator, which is the, the, oh, the one thing that makes FromSoft games or Souls games kind of like Souls games. It's missing a character creator. And I feel like that's something that these games probably are going to be missing. But the development of the character throughout the playthrough, I thought was incredibly cool. You start off as like a boy and then you're like, you're a teenager and you end as a man. I wasn't expecting that shit to happen. There's a lot of Bloodborne in here, but I think that's in design and storytelling beats. Not as much in like direct gameplay. Because there were some areas that like, I'm like, dude, we're just in the Nightmare of Mensis right now oh, we're, we're kind of doing the forest area. And they sort of happen at similar spots. But my God, man. Yeah, there's very few areas I really disliked about this game. They just all feel really good to go through. All, you know what I got to give them credit for? There's a couple moments in Bloodborne that are sick, where like enemies bust through walls and shit. There's a couple of moments in Bloodborne that are like that, but it doesn't happen all the time. In this game, they try to... They try to inject these cool moments of the enemies like manipulating the environment or busting down walls or doing some crazy thing in every single zone and area. And I think that's awesome. The enemies that you fight interact with the areas like quite a bit and present to you this like, okay, here's this crazy challenge. Here's what they do now, like get ready. I honestly think this game is incredibly cool. I give it like an 11 out of 10. I, I, I emphatically implore you to play this shit. Even if you don't like traditional FromSoft games, I really, really, really implore you to check this game out. There's a lot to it. It's incredibly fun. It's got great levels. It's got great storytelling. I am being pursued currently. It's so good. I, I give it, I give it, uh, my, my critical rating is a 10 out of 10. Critically. My personal rating is like an 11. I love this game.